Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Thank you, Sister Elizabeth. Um, <clears throat> thank you for this great opportunity to share a thought and also, um, you know, this topic was so fascinating when you offered me uh, a few weeks ago about this topic and uh, I was thinking about it that what is really compassion then can I really think about it like what really is I never thought about like what is a particular this word you know it's so beautiful word when we think about it and immediately we just start having some sensation some feeling no compassion uh, starting uh, my uh, sharing with the story which actually more uh, helped me and motivated me to uh, really go into the depth of it. And that story is a very true story which just happened recently in my life. First of all, can everyone hear me, right? My voice is okay, sound is okay? Sound is okay? You're great, thank you. Okay. So please do let me know when my sound goes down. I usually do experience, uh, <clears throat> it does happen. Uh, when I'm sharing, sometimes I just become so much introverted and my sound volume starts going down. So I would appreciate your welcome to interrupt me in between and do let me know and I will definitely make sure that you all could hear me. So when I was thinking about this, that topic of compassion, that what I'm gonna share about, what do I, do I really understand about this? And I wanted to share something which is absolutely comes from within, not from collecting from sources, you know, then I thought, I don't think my intellect can really absorb that or store that. And, uh, so I was at my son's place and uh, helping them with his son, grandchild. Uh, and then I asked him, uh, I was I, actually, he asked me that like, for how long can you stay? And, uh, and it is just about a couple of days ago. And I said, well, I really need to go back uh, to my place is because, uh, I am doing this service of sharing on this topic of compassion. And then my son said, he said, that shouldn't be difficult for you. I said, no, what do you mean not difficult for me? I have never thought about what is compassion. If someone asks me really what does what compassion means is, you know, he says, mom, I just want to tell you and actually that made me so emotional is, and this, that's what my motivation actually. So we had a visitor in the house that morning, a couple of days ago. And that visitor was um, actually, uh, I, I just cannot make the too much story right and left, but I can just talk straight, uh, was my ex-husband's girlfriend. And uh, my ex-husband passed away recently, month of April. And uh, that girlfriend, uh, she was in the hospital when he got a heart attack and we were informed. So we went to the hospital, me and my both the boys. So the very first day, everything was okay. And this girl was okay to me, nice to me. And then we went second day again. And in the second day, this girl called the security that boys can come to visit their dad, but Poonam is not allowed. Said, okay, no problem. I drove with children four hours from Walnut Creek all the way to Reading. And to just imagine that if you've been asked not to go in the hospital. So anyway, uh, this, that was the, how the episode started. And uh, so she was uh, not comfortable with my visit. 
she was not comfortable the very first day when I went, I was meditating. And uh, so what happened? Um, so then uh, ultimately after three weeks or so, ex-husband passed away and then we did all the services and all. And uh, so we, I had no connection with that girl, but do I, uh, she came to the services the last day and uh, I expressed my, uh, all the feelings and I also offered her a help. And she was very surprised. How is that possible? That I'm not even talking to her, how I treated her in the hospital. And now here she's offering me a help. So, so that scene was over too. So day before yesterday, she visited our house. She didn't know that I would be also present with boys. So when she entered, I opened the door and she was very surprised to see me. And she didn't expect me to be there because that's my boy's house, son's house. So I welcomed her with hug and uh, I gave her a lot of, lot of uh, uh, love and uh, really honored her visit and uh, sustained her with lots of delicious food and uh, uh, laughter and like there was nothing there between us and actually there was nothing from my end so at the end uh, when she was leaving and in this whole of four hours of her uh, staying at the house boys were kind of not attending her though they invited her and they weren't attending her and uh, my daughter-in-law wasn't attending no one was attending i was the only one who was more present so this person, this girl, she was really, really in tears. And then she said, how do you do this? I didn't know what, what she, she meant really. It's just, I have been so mean to you, so rude to you. And then she says, I asked your ex-husband to disconnect with you, not to answer your text messages. And, uh, and it, it just happened just recently before he passed away. And um, I thought, oh, okay, well, um, that was just an action that you performed. And this is the action that I perform with my consciousness, with understanding that who I truly are. And, uh, and I know that love is my true nature. Compassion is my true nature. And so as yours is. And then she was in tears. So she hugged and she wanted to know, can, how can you help me? <laughs> to become like you <laughs> ultimately and then she left so my son reminded me of this story he says uh, mom i have been observing all that and that is the true compassion and then i really realized that that compassion is our Sanskar, it is our personality trait. And uh, in outwardly, what we say, so uh, Sister Elizabeth, am I a host too now? I would like to share some screen which I just created quickly with uh, some thoughts. And let's see if I could share those. Yes, go ahead and share. Okay. So we have. So this is the second slide show PowerPoint I have ever created. It was a great experience, and had been thinking about it. And I was shared this one quotation from Ian McLaren, who was a writer 
and a movie star in, nine, in 1887, who expressed in his books, what is compassion? And his words, be kind, everyone is fighting a hard battle. And that made me think, be kind. Excuse me. What does be kind means? So compassion is kindness, caring, and especially the tendency to think about the needs and good of others. We express, and, and how do we do that? How do we care? This is outwardly, through the charity, through volunteer work, helping others in their difficult times, being present with them, that is compassion spending time with individuals who are hurting in some way. That is compassion. You're offering your pure energy, which is coming from your eternal self. And that is your virtue. And that is kindness. And more on top of it, compassion means is understanding. We serve people, we serve community, we serve all relationship through understanding. And so once we understand and what it makes you realize it, what compassion is, it's a state of mind, a state of emotions, which drives our kindness, our merciful attitude towards other people. Can you think of this? Can you close your eyes for a one moment and experience that, that state of mind, that sensitivity of who you are eternally as a pure being? being of consciousness and compassion is your true nature. And when we hear this word already such a beautiful Laughing sensation starts happening in the body. The compassion, definition of compassion. is loving other people, but how loving people is not is the physical kind of a love, but the kindness we express is full of love. And this feeling, the sensitivity of purity, that love, which arises naturally, 
once we recognize ourselves eternally and there is a motivation that we want to express something practically. We want to offer some kind of a support to people, to community, to come to our country, to nature. So what's understanding of compassion is Once you have recognized yourself as a pure being, not as a belief, but a pure experience, that is compassion. You have an opportunity to look at your own being. So the practice of seeing and experiencing your true self within this body is compassion. So what compassion is, it's a sensitivity, a pure feeling. You know, in our Brahma Kumaris, there is a, I guess what I'm understanding, what I'm seeing is everyone who have joined our all uh, Baba's children, or PK, mostly. I am not sure if anyone is from outside. Or anything. Uh, there, there, it's a, a mix. Okay. But all are inside, and I know you mean that. <laughs> <laughs> all are part of the spiritual family. But all understanding the principles and things there there are some that do and um, some who are new okay. yeah so one of the uh, realization that what i shared here is that as we become conscious of ourself we are giving without giving and what does that really mean you know when we say about consciousness so consciousness is, is, is my true being. It's my inner state that I am aware. And what I was going to share in our Brahma Kumaris, there is a one uh, program or one channel they started and TV channel and it's on YouTube also and it has a name awakening, awakening with Brahma Kumaris. So what really that meant to me was, it really actually helped me so much this one word, awakening, you know, and it, is, it has a lot, a lot relationship with compassion. Uh, I'm not sure, can you see some other words are popping up down there? I'm not sure about those, but uh, if you cannot see, that's wonderful. They are in Hindi. As I said, this is my second time creating this uh, PowerPoint. So, yeah, you can see the translation script oh, in Hindi. Hindi? Okay. I'm okay. Not, I have no clue what button I would have pressed. <laughs> no, it's, it's good. Okay, okay. So awakening means is being aware being aware, who am I? And when I know that compassion is my true nature, so that means anything is opposite to compassion is not my nature. The other words I would say, anger, is anger my nature? If compassion is my nature, I cannot create any thought of anger. Any, any thought of hurting anyone. Compassion is acceptance unconditionally. And 
in awakening of my consciousness, then I ask myself, why is it required? And then the answer comes is just from the experience. If I'm experiencing anger, sadness, that means compassion within me is merged. And that needs to be reawakened. And in order to reawaken that, I need to go more and more deeper in myself and take and see what are the weaknesses, what are the obstacles which are not allowing me to experience my own true quality. Outwardly, we express compassion, but that could be in a state of not fully awake, not fully conscious. And what is that is just when we are um, serving our pets, we leave the pet home, go to work, and when we come back, Pet is not asking for the food, but, but just looking at pet's face, state of how pet is just, you know, presenting. Very naturally, this feeling arises that I must serve a meal to the pet. That is compassion. Compassion towards children, children who are uh, suffering from some very, uh, so children are with illness. There are children hospital. One time I got an opportunity to visit with someone and uh, my heart melted seeing so many, so many children at a very young age, dealing with so much of chronic illnesses. And by seeing that, very naturally, anyone can have compassion towards children and can offer any kind of services. One can. And then outwardly, we also express our compassion to older people, people who are, um, I would just say, in, uh, living in a, a older people's home where uh, they need a caregiver or uh, they are uh, not able to really uh, take care of themselves. And, uh, and when we see them, we like to help. And again, it's extrovertedly without thinking about who eternally, surely I am, or if compassion is my nature, but this is how we express. We express through our body. But inwardly, when we think about it, then there is a question. In order to serve myself, to my family and to my country, to the world, to the nature. It is so important for me to know who am I? And it's not once, 
many times throughout the day. Create that, create that clarity, that anger, attachments, ego, and not my nature. My true, pure nature is love. happiness and compassion for the self, for everyone. And in this task of compassion, there are many factors. If we do not do the practice to eternalize to stay in that state of being a pure energy for a long period of time and making that practice as very natural. So when it becomes natural, then you don't have to there won't be any thought of caring or giving yourself naturally. Whatever scene comes in front of you, any adverse situation, any people suffering, any chaos from not only from ex externally, but eternally. The chaos, the obstacles do arise from inside as well. Our mind, our mind has, the mind to get influenced, but we see externally. And in that state, there is an effort. So this practice of Raja Yoga, we learn a very first, you know, the very first lesson. We are being introduced about ourselves, who we are, truly, eternally, as a pure being of light, being of energy. And my true nature is love, is kindness, is compassion. When I was thinking about it, what's going on today in the world, it is so much required. The world is begging for it. The world is thirsty for it. The world is searching for it. Everyone for kindness to be cared, to be understood. Also in our very first lesson of Raj Yoga, along with understanding of a true state, of a true form, that how we perform action through this body. We use these five senses, seeing, hearing, talking, smelling, inhaling. You can see these 
five senses. And the fifth one is touch. It gives such a deeper understanding of how we can relate this in serving the world today and how important it is for everyone, everyone that they must know themselves truly who they are. With their true consciousness, which has divine qualities, divine virtues. And when we forget ourselves, then we are influenced by our physical senses. And whatever we see, we respond to the scene with whatever arises, whether it could be with our divine quality or it could be with our some weaknesses. So how today world is going through this pandemic, which has influenced the whole world, nature is showing is some kind of disagreement with human beings and is upset. How to respond to that? How to respond to the people who are suffering and not knowing who they are eternally? So compassion plays a great role, which is so much in need in today's world that we must, we must have a practice. And it starts with the self first. If I eternally am not awakened, not conscious, then I definitely can influence or get affected by external situations. If I'm eternally not having compassion for myself, A care, true care, true kindness, loving kindness. To take care of myself and practice to emerge with full attention my true qualities at all time and perform every action with the awareness of that divine, divine light, divine virtue, divine energy, divine vibrations. And serving from that state, it's going to be very naturally and easy. We can't expect people to change. We can't expect people to be how we want them to be. Even if we know that, even if I know that, who am I? I am separate from this body. I am a being of energy. 
operating this body with my pure awareness. But if that's not maintained, then I lose compassion. I need to be compassionate about my true state of being. And how is that possible? For the very first step is experience. We can hear about it from different definitions, from intellectuals. People have expressed in many other ways, many different ways. But the most important is if I am not full, I'm not caring for myself, self as a being of energy, not working on constant removing all the weaknesses and imbibing all my true qualities. And then I can get affected. Affected by any external situation. So this is a great gift to the self. Very first to know I'm a pure being of energy. And experiencing that. When we start experiencing that, natural, very naturally, pure vibrations starts emanating through us. And then we go into the field of service, serving our family. serving our neighbors, serving our relatives, we accept them. We accept them unconditionally. And that is compassion. We don't put any label on that and we don't expect them to be different who they are. And compassion is an understanding which brings so much clarity that in each body we meet, whether they are our relatives, close or far, or neighbor, or any human being, within the body, there is a pure energy. And if that pure energy went through a long journey. And in this long journey, people have accumulated a recording, how they responded to the scene of difficulties in their life, how they responded and how they experienced. That is all stored within them. And because they have a burden of that storage, they are not able to have compassion for themselves. So accepting them, just being present in front of them and listening them, acknowledging them is a compassion. So 
but really, really, as for my understanding, it's our journey, being in the body, we can, once we get to know who we truly are, spend time with yourself, get to know yourself. And as much you will go more deeper and deeper, and that will be true service. You will get so many information about yourself. And that is compassion. Raj Yoga, our second lesson, we also learn once we are able to compare within ourselves. Yes, we do have divine qualities. Peace is our true nature. Compassion is our true nature. Love is our true nature. But at the same time, I'm not able to experience that. How can I serve? How can I be compassionate to people? Sometimes we do all, but it all comes from our weaknesses, which we say is from our ego. We want to prove ourselves to be good. We want to prove ourselves to be kind, which is actually is our weakness. So how to experience pure, pure energy, pure compassion, true compassion, without any weaknesses, is to connect to the higher being, to the Supreme, who is a source, source of all the divine qualities. And in this Raj Yoga, the beautiful practices, very simply, we put our attention in the supreme light, that supreme energy, and start receiving and fulfilling his quality, his pure energy. And in this simple method, once understood and recognized, I, the soul, the being of energy, start experiencing freedom, freedom from all the weaknesses, and experience very natural that state of being a compassionate. So, and it doesn't need any effort to express, to show. It is so natural that the acts are being performed. Just one example, if the hand is putting the food into the mouth, the mouth does not say thank you to the hand. So it is just an expression which happens very naturally. It was just a moment. It is just a moment that is being expressed. So similarly, In simple way, 
understanding, practicing, expressing compassion is practice who we are eternally. As a being of light, as a being of light, a soul with its pure divine quality. So, this is what is the sharing. And uh, if anyone has any question, would like to ask. Otherwise, we can do a practice of meditation. Today, where the world is, it needs. It needs so much of our attention, our presence of such souls, such being of light who have recognized themselves, who have become an instrument for God to serve the world, serve the nature and serve the self with pure feeling, with compassion. So anyone has any question? If anybody would like in, to share their insights, um, you know, I certainly appreciated the line of when compassion becomes natural, your giving is not, you don't experience that you're even giving. And uh, like there's no pride in it. It's just like a flow of energy. So I, I really appreciated that insight. It was very nice. Thank you. Uh, would anyone else have any insights on compassion? We're all compassionate. And I was wondering, you know, you know, Kunim Ben is that what do you do when you if someone I know you gave a story, but if someone um hurts you or they purposely try to harm you um you know and you have these are usually with long-term relationships when you thought you build a trust and you feel the trust was broken so what would you do i know you you shared this story of someone that you really didn't know but i not to challenge that because that was an amazing offering that became natural for you but um, what do we do when we're in situations that um, we really feel hurt and that our tr trust has been broken? So the very uh, beautiful uh, understanding and recognition is from our practice. And I would say the practice only if it is applied is um, when we are coming into you know, in person, when in any relationship, um, there are disagreements, there are the allegations, there are blames, and um, people expect a lot. But uh, what should be my response at that moment? If I'm awake, if I'm conscious, then I'm just only going to see the light in each individual. And respecting 
the response that could be of anger, that could be blaming. Because when people complain and blame, and react, show the anger, they are suffering. In, in our practice, if you practice this, being conscious of who am I, then my response would be very peaceful. And just wait for the time when the other energy comes down and then do the service of sending that vibration with good wishes, with compassion. The other being who is in relationship will be a long period of time. They are responding in a negative way or in a whatever way that they are not, they're complaining, but something which is just they have stored in their intellect from their journey that triggers and then they react. That reaction could be on anyone, but the most reactions are happening on the close relationship. So, so thankful to this knowledge of Raj Yoga, which really, really helps us to see the contrast of external and eternal world. Externally, we are experiencing. Eternally, we practice. We practice till we become fully awake. And if someone comes in front with reaction, with allegation, with complaint, and that is the great opportunity to eternalize and bow down to them, to, for them to be reminding them, reminding us, who am I? What is my true nature? And that is compassion. Um, I now, uh, you can unmute yourself if you have a question now. Uh, I think Joanne had some, insights to share with us no i didn't um, <laughs> um i was aware that there someone was not able to unmute so that's why i sent a message uh, so maybe that person um, would like to bring something to this thank you joanne hello are you guys going to hear sorry are you are you ladies able to hear me oh yes thanks ariel how are you i'm doing i'm doing well actually how are you guys doing how are you ladies doing good <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm from new york so it's so <laughs> sorry um yeah uh speaking of the on the compassionate part um i'm really happy i, I tuned into this uh this meeting today um you know with you know everything the world is going on and suffering from anxiety i think um compassionate is something i'm i'm working on and i'm working on it in a fact where i'm not expecting anything in, in return you know um and yeah, I want I want it to be a, a first nature to me. Um, it is it, it usually is. Um, like I said, dealing with everything that's going on, I'm more anxious and more 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 irritated than usual. Um, so I really working on compassion, being compassionate for me, is a is a big is a big thing. And I like like I said, I'm happy I tuned in because I learned you know some new things and some new ways to, to work on that. Um, thank you. <laughs> well thank you thank you ariel mm -hmm. you always have such lovely things to share from your 
you know, yes. experimenting and, you know, it's, it, it is, it is a challenge, but what I liked with what Poonam was offering was even in the tone of your voice, Poonam was how to find that place to keep centered in compassion. And, and sometimes I feel that, you know, there's so much going on in the world that I don't know where to direct my compassion. <laughs> and I, right. it's almost overwhelming. Right, no, yeah. <laughs> That's very true because see, in this, um, this topic of compassion, it just doesn't end here. Along with the compassion, the, uh, also comes the wisdom. It is not that, uh, and with the wisdom, discernment, you know, helping others, keep giving, giving, giving others, but not having that discernment, that would not be a compassion. Understanding, mm -hmm. you know, so, and it all comes with the compassion of wisdom. Very, very important to know because there is another story that I can share um, that I actually had heard long time ago. And uh, the story was is that uh, there was one king and he always liked to uh, help and give help to so many people in his kingdom. Uh, but when the help was also very selective, like helping people, then he would just see who really, really deserves it or who's coming for the help, whether, you know, he should give or he should not give. So he would have that discernment. One day he, uh, but he would give, that was his, uh, he was very kind. And uh, one day in his sleep, he had a dream. God comes in his dream. And, uh, and then God talks to him about it. I, I guess you might have heard the story. Uh, God talks to him about it, that um, to the king, uh, that you are a very kind being. And in your kingdom, you serve everyone. But you as a child of God, child of me, you, your acts are not like me. I give people, I, I serve everyone uh, unconditionally. When they, when they approach me, ask for help, I serve them, but you categorize. So King was thinking about this dream. If God doesn't categorize, why do I have to categorize? When he wakes up in the morning, he is very happy. He calls his ministers and then share his dream. He says, um, God came in my dream and, uh, and he was sharing that I can become like a God too if I share, if I uh, share my wealth and help and compassion to everyone. And uh, so far I have been doing it to people who have been in need, but now I have to give to someone who is not in need. And so he start. he goes to, so that he asks his uh, minister that let's just go in the kingdom and then look for the person who is really not in need and give to someone who doesn't ask for, who is not, you know, really um, needing any help or compassion. So the king minister and king, they both go into the kingdom and on the horse and they start looking for, you know, whom, and then they carry a big bag of lot of gold coins and King was looking for whom shall I give this back? Who really doesn't need it? Who really doesn't want it? 
and uh, then they meet someone and they ask we're looking for someone who really can be helped and who doesn't need a help and then person directed to king to go to the one park where he said like some people they are having some kind of a wrong stuff smoking and uh, drinking and uh, being in a really different land you know so king said yeah this is good idea none of them will ask for it but we'll look for someone whom we can give so the minister he goes into the park and he ask uh, one person and who that person is it hey, um, our king who is carrying a bag of gold coins and he wants to give to someone who really doesn't need it but we king wants to help so the person says no you know because the person was really uh, drunk and uh, no awareness of like and the minister asked it again do you need some wealth do you need some gold coin our king has come and he is giving all this bag of gold coins and you will become very rich but the person was so much lost or intoxicated with all the stuff that he has taken and he says no kind of no. then he pointed it is to just go to that person and this is very strange i'm offering him so much of wealth and then this person is just you know imagine not even just caring for and uh, so the minister goes to the other person the you know the first person pointed to and that person was also you know having some smoking and some drugs and drunk drunk and so minister asked him that king our king has brought a bag of gold coin would you like to take them our king is very honored to give you that whole bag and you will become very rich and that person was very lazy he says yeah sure if you put it in my pocket so minister said wow that means he is not worthy the laziness he says if you want to give me some coins or some you know then put it in my pocket he didn't even want to get up because he was just kind of in his own world and in his own uh you know having all those uh, drinks and stuff and uh, uh then king and minister they went back home and this is this person who can't even get up to take the uh you know this gold coins doesn't deserve to have this so when we are offering our help we have to make sure it is coming from my true eternal state of purity but not from ego ego can take us cross boundaries ego can take us to uh, there is no compassion actually but our weakness is also when we are influenced we try to express try to help we do charity we think we can be free from the weaknesses but there is no other way than to know yourself truly who you are and connect to the source so wisdom is very important which comes with compassion and discernment making a decision who to give who really is needy and it should come from a pure being pure being of love pure being of kindness 
So we'll do the uh, meditation practice. I have a question just before, is that okay? <laughs> so what's the difference between judging and discerning? Because in this story, mm -hmm. by the way, you're very good at storytelling. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. I had my my mic open so I couldn't hear you. Oh, I said like and I, I'm not usually a storyteller, but uh, these this just kind of popped up in <laughs> my awareness and I'll share. But uh, when we are uh, offering our services, we have to be, again, being aware that if it is coming from my pure being, or if it is coming from my ego, my weakness. Okay, so in this story, you're talking about, um, so finally someone is going to take it, but then we decide that, they're lazy because they don't want to get up but god doesn't do that so yeah, that's yeah. why i'm asking mm -hmm. god even gives to the laziest of us all right <laughs> just saying <laughs> so <laughs> what's the difference so then only only if <laughs> sorry i said only if the lazy one will approach to god that oh god please give me, then God is going to have mercy. But otherwise, then God is not partial to anyone. Personal level, God is equal. God treats all his children equally. But who gets the most help who approach to him? Who, who really request him? Okay. So, uh, shall we do some meditation practice? So, what my understanding is that when together we practice meditation, we create thought, we create a high energy thought, and we also create pure vibrations, which not only help or uplift the self, but to the atmosphere and to the world. When we practice together, our energy, our vibrations reaches out to the world even when we practice soul consciousness, just see ourselves as a pure light within this body. Even this practice serves so many in the world, many in the world, and that is compassion. So we will just uh, have a few minutes as I see the time, it's just 15 minutes left. And uh, I try to turn this. Um, okay, guess it didn't happen. So the music is not working, which I was a little doubtful earlier, but we will do the practice. Just that music. So we will all sit comfortably and straight. And in the meditation, each thought we create 
as you are listening, you can repeat after in your mind. And as I, you will repeat the thought after me, also create a scene of that thought. To visualize it. So whatever thought we create, we visualize it. See it. And we focus our full attention on it. And with that, We create higher vibrations. We use power of concentration. And that energy won't let your attention go elsewhere. So if you are holding a phone, please put your phone away. Not using it for the Zoom. If you sit straight, and now we do the breathing exercise of inhaling and exhaling three times. So take a deep breath. Exhale. Two more times. Just relax and take it. Now, very slowly, bring your attention to the center of your forehead and visualize a shining star. Center of the forehead, right here, where we put the bindi. Visualize a shining star. A little star. A little point of light. Just bring your full attention to the center of your And see that star very gently, not with the pressure, but you must see the star. A very bright, little point of light emanating pure energy. Feel that energy. Feel that light. And now visualize that your body is full of white light. 
Phantom white. And the forehead, we see a shining star. We are experiencing light. Body is full of bright light. I am a pure divine soul. Pure energy. Feel, feel the energy. Purity is my personality. Energy of purity. Vibrations of purity radiating in my whole body. Feel that pure energy in your body. Feel the light. Each part of the body is energized. The pure vibrations. Every organ, every cell radiating pure energy Pure light. We thank you to the body forty million times. Each part of the body is healthy and will remain healthy. Body is energized, the pure vibrations. Feel that energy. Feel the pure. within this body of light. Experience the pure vibrations. So when we practice this together, we are emanating pure energy. We are reactivating our divine qualities. Practice concentration of 
experience of a true eternal state of being. Yet consciousness, pure energy. 